Hey everybody, Mrs. Peterson here, and we're going to talk about color theory today. And I want to go through three different aspects of color theory. One, the kind of color that you paint with, or the kind of color that you put onto paper, right? And then another kind that is printed, it's a different type of color. And the other type of color that is projected, color is designed and works different in all three of those venues. The first thing that we're gonna do is kind of talk about the basics of the color wheel, which many of you already have reviewed. And so that's gonna go kind of quick, and then we'll talk about the other two. Okay, here we go. Well, hold on, here we go. There we go. So, we're gonna do terminology related to color theory. We're gonna do the different types of color schemes and you'll be doing a little assignment on that. We're gonna develop color schemes, that's that assignment. You're gonna identify RGB values and colors and you're going to establish CMYK colors. Now, we're doing our main project on that first one, all right? Here we go. Part one, color terminology and color schemes, all right? The color results when light is reflected off an object. So when the light reflects off of this pen and reflects back to my eye, that's when I see it as this color, right? Everything else is absorbed into this pen and we only see the color that's reflected back to us, right? The color is what that's reflected back to us and the length of the wave helps us determine the color. So you've seen spectrum, you've seen prisms or rainbows, those all have to do with the, how big the wave is. So primary colors. Primary colors are red, yellow, and blue, right? These are considered the basic colors because you can mix any color in paint or something that you're maybe putting on paper can be mixed in, with these three colors, right? Now, tints and shades. I've already talked to a few of you about this when we were, when we were um, putting together an example of monochromatic, right? Tint is when you add white to a color, right? When you add white to a color. But shade is when you add black to a color, a blue shade and a blue tint, right? Now we will be having a test over this terminology and the different aspects that we're talking about here. Okay, color terminology, secondary colors, secondary colors, you guys. When you take two colors, you already reviewed this, red plus yellow equals orange, red plus blue equals violet, and blue plus yellow equals green. That is when you're painting and you're mixing colors, or you have crayons, things that you're putting on paper, right? These colors are made by mixing equal amounts of the primary colors. But there's another one that, that we're gonna look at called tertiary colors, all right? Tertiary colors. These colors can be created in two ways. First, you can mix an unequal amount of primary colors, or you can mix a primary and a secondary together, right? So let's look. Yellow plus green is, yellow is primary, green is secondary, equals the tertiary, right? Red plus violet, red is primary, violet is secondary, equals red violet. Red plus orange, red orange, blue plus green is blue green. But you could also do this much red and this much blue, they're unequal amounts, and that would create a tertiary color. Or this much yellow and this much red, and it would create a tertiary color. This all has to do with, think of painting and mixing colors, all right? It's not the same in printing, it's not the same in digital color coming out of your screen, all right? So we do have some neutral colors, right? And the neutral colors, you guessed it, the black and white and gray. 
those make sense. The other ones that we're going to add in there is brown and tan. I don't know if you've ever taken your paint set and mixed them all together. You don't usually get black. You get some sort of brown, right? And tan would be white added to that, right? White, brown, black, and various shades of each, right? Let's try over here again. Let's see. Okay, color wheel. You've all reviewed this already. So uh, this should look similar to the project that you've processed through already. So we arrange the primary, secondary, and tertiary colors in a circle right next to each other, the adjacent colors, and we get what we can call a color wheel. All right, um, this one's kind of a flat tire, but it's still a color wheel. Now, this is where we get, we talked about this one already. We talked about a few of these color schemes, but not all of them. So here's the first one, complementary colors. Any two colors that are exactly opposite each other on the color wheel, right? So orange and blue, exactly opposite. If I do green and red, Christmas colors, they're exactly opposite. Blue, green, and red, orange, exactly opposite. So when you think of complementary colors, you'll think of a straight line. That's how you're gonna find it. And I say that because we're gonna need some shapes to help us with these next color schemes, right? Here we go. The next one is a split complementary. So if you think blue and orange are directly across from each other, then make a fork with it, okay? So blue, and when you split it, you're not gonna hit orange, but you're gonna use the two things on either side of that yellow, orange, and red, orange, right? So you could, you could go red and green, those are complementary, but a split complement would be red and yellow, green, and blue, green. So think of that fork on the end of your split complement. Yellow complement would be violet, but the split complement would be blue, violet, and red, violet, okay? So the next one is, um, and not, um, can't say it today, analogous colors, right? And those are colors that are right next to each other on the color wheel, right? Right next to each other on the color wheel. So green, green, blue, and blue, red, orange, red, red, orange, and red. And any tertiary color in between, you guys, you could have a tertiary color right here in between and that would fit as well. Okay. This one is called a harmonious pair. So if you think of, if you think of the split complement with, the, with the, uh, the fork, or if you think of a rectangle, right? And here's what I say about a rectangle. A rectangle is long. This, think of a long rectangle and then it's gonna work. Yellow, green, blue, violet, red, violet, yellow, orange, and yellow, green. It's a rectangle. Right, so I could do it here, green, blue, red, and orange. It's a rectangle, all right? All right, so those are gonna be complementary, but there's also, uh, I mean, a, a harmonious pairs, all right? Four colors that have split complementaries already, right? So if we know that red and Red, orange, and blue, green are opposite on the color wheels, then we know these are split complements and these are split complements and there's our rectangle that works, all right? This next one, think of a triangle and it's gonna help you out because it's, gonna, it's called a triad. It's already telling you three colors, you guys, but it's a little bit different than that split complement because you're gonna skip a few colors, right? colors that are equally distanced from each other on the color wheel. So if you think of that perfect triangle, right? We call it, uh, not a right triangle, we call it um, equal, equilateral, equal sides, equal angles. This really is a pretty ugly equilateral triangle. But the, if you place the triangle in the middle of your color wheel, you would be able to find those triads, okay? It's not a split complement, it's a triad. Colors that are equally distant from each other on the color wheel. The most basic triad scheme is the three primary colors, right? Blue, red, and yellow. Or the three tertiary colors, green, violet, and orange, right? 
So again, if you lay that equilateral triangle in the middle of your color wheel, it will help you find those colors. All right, let's go on to the next one. Now, the other one was a squishy, remember a squishy uh, rectangle. This one is actually a square. Now, it doesn't look like a square today, but it's a square on your actual wheel. Because remember, I have a flat tire today. Four colors that are equally distanced from each other, not a squishy rectangle, but a square, okay? If you lay a square in the middle of the color, the tips of it will point to four colors. Yellow, green, blue, red, violet, and orange, right? And if you, you're just gonna get a square, all right? I'm going to actually do that with my class here and we're gonna rotate the square around, right? And then tetrad pairs, okay? Place the square in the middle of the wheel. Your four colors located, okay, this is a sample, okay? So the tetrad is the one that we just saw right before this. You place your square in the middle of the color wheel and those four that touch is gonna be a color scheme that you've put together. Your four colors are located in the corners of the square and then you're going to use two colors for your main colors and the other two for your accents. So see how there's a picture here? And to be honest, I don't know what their main color is. Maybe the, maybe the magenta is their main color and maybe their orange is their main color, and the green, the, the yellow green is accent and the blue is accent, okay? Because you're gonna be actually coloring some papers and you're gonna place, you're gonna get your own uh, color scheme plans. So let's look at a different one. This one right here is analogous. Remember they're right next to each other on the color wheel. So this artist picked these three, okay? Choose any three, Colors, also neutral colors can always be part of any of these color schemes. Neutral colors don't change the color scheme. So I could do uh, green, yellow, green, and yellow, and I could use black, or I could keep it white for background, or I could use gray, all right? Or maybe I'd do orange, sorry, orange, red, orange, and yellow, orange, and used a brown because that might complement it. But it's still only three colors because the, the neutral colors don't count in the color scheme, right? Here's one more, I believe. Here is, here is uh, one version of the assignment. So if you're in principles, this is your assignment. You have a color wheel and I'm gonna give you some printouts. I'm gonna be sending those to you. It says don't use markers, but I don't mind if you use markers, you guys. You can use markers for this. You're gonna design um, five different color schemes. If you want 100%, you have to do all five plus the question. If you want at least an 80%, at least an 80, you have to do four of them and the question. If you want, that's it. You gotta do at least four, right? Five for 100%. Um, choose your own variations of the color and give your schemes. And then you're also going to, um, oh, you'll see, let me, let me grab that real quick. Okay, here we go. Here's an example. Let's see if it sees it. See the rectangle? Okay, and then there's just kind of a design in there. In that design, you are going to uh, color it, let's say it's a triad and you do orange, green, and violet. Then you would just use orange, green, and violet anywhere in here. You could do orange, green, violet, orange, green, violet, orange, green, violet, or you could do orange, green, violet with orange, 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 green, 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 violet, or you could alternate them. You can alternate these. You're just going to use the color scheme within it. Now the last page of this assignment has a, has a little question that you have to answer. And the question says, um, which number is your favorite color scheme? So there's five different sets, right? So if number five, you would say number five right here. And then the type, so you would say, well, number five is, um, is the 
triad. So you would write the triad is my favorite color scheme. And then you explain, all right? So you have to do that, okay? Now, if you are in graphic design, you're basically gonna be doing this assignment. I have a worksheet for you to look at, but you're going to design these in Canva and you can really use the color wheel on that. And I'm also gonna show you a website that you can go to right now that will also help you in really great ways. So let me get there, okay? Hold on, I'm gonna escape. There we go. I'm gonna to go to Canva. Right, in Canva, you'll start the same size paper that you always do, right? And that is, anyone, anyone? Custom dimensions. We're gonna change this from pixels to inches. Uh, 11 by eight and a half or eight and a half by 11, 8.5. Okay, and I want it in inches. It won't let you in pixels, you know it won't, right? And then, uh, you know, you can start with a background color. So let's start with a neutral background. And if you remember the background colors that are neutral are black, white, and grays and browns. So I'm just gonna be different and I'm gonna choose a brown background. And the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm going to adjust this orange into a brown that I like. All right, there's my brown. And then I'm gonna pick some shapes. So let's go to elements. I think you should use repeated shapes. So let's get the ones that you can change the color scheme on, all right? I've done toys in the past. I've done balls in the past. I can just use regular shapes. I'm not gonna use stickers, those jump up and down. I think I've used uh, flowers in the past. So let me think of a new kind of shape. Let's use technology. Okay, so technology, interesting things. I wanna make sure that they have a similar feel to them and I wanna make sure that I can change the color scheme, okay? So this is kind of fun and it's free. So I'm gonna drop that one in there. And look, it gave me some recommendations, okay? So I have this guy in here and this guy. I'm gonna see all, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and see all because they already have shapes that are gonna complement each other. It's the only reason I'm choosing this, all right? I don't want the black. Well, I could, I could use the black, but remember that's a neutral color. And let's go ahead, I'm gonna put this rocket behind them. All right? And I want it behind them, so, and kind of going up in the air, I think. I want it behind them. So I'm gonna go ahead and position them to the back, right? So here's my simple design, all right? And I'm not gonna really spend a lot of time right now on my design because my job is to do the color scheme, right? So I know that I can change these colors because they're, they're in, uh, they already are complementary. They already show you that they have them, but when I, when I grab it, it gives me the color scheme up here, right? So I'm going to go to a website called Palatin. This is super cool, you guys. Palatin. P-A-L-L-O-T. Palette. I think it's Palatin. Oh, I think I found it. Pa P A L is one L. Peloton. This is so cool, you guys. Okay, here's your color wheel. I want to show you this. Look here. This has all the things you need. First, you press this one, and if you want to add complementary colors, it's going to give you a complementary color of all these colors. If you want the vivid complementary, you would go this color 
with this color. Why can't we see my home screen? Let's see if I can. There, I scroll it down. Okay. If you want them really vivid, you can actually take it to this side. If you want them lighter colors, you can take it to this side. But this is the coolest part. Are you ready? Complementary colors. Let's say I want this one. When I click on it right here, let's see. Hold on. Examples. No. Let me go back. Okay, here is Palatin, right? Now, we have this right here, and I can create a complementary color. I can just rotate this around. It's going to give me the complementary colors. But it's also going to give me the number that I need for that color, all right? So if I like this color right here, 554, five, I don't like this color. I'm not going to pick that color. Complementary. I'm going to pick this one first, 550000, right? And then I'm going to go back to Canva and I'm going to make one of my colors. Watch this. I'm going to say 550000. There is that color that I just found. Coolest thing ever, but I actually. I'm not going to do a complementary color. I'm let's going to do one of the other color schemes right here, and I'm going to do a split complement. Here I go. This is a split complement, all right? Now, the, the complement would be the green. See that? And then these two colors are the split. So I picked this one, and it's not a straight green across. It's going to be these other colors. So I'm going to pick one of these colors in the scheme, and I'm going to stay with the dark one, I think. Now this one's 354FOO. Three, three, go back here. Here we go. 354FOO. There's my other one. Okay, oops, I forgot to change. Let me go back. Let me go back. Okay, now I have that color. Let me change this color because I want this. Whoa, what just happened? There we go. Let me change a new color. I'm going to change the yellow and I'm going to make this one. I'm going to go back and find that, that uh, whatever this one was. Five, oh. Come on. Come on, little. I'm, way, I'm holding it over the top of it. Now I'm holding my mouse down. I don't know if you can tell, but my computer's thinking a lot right now. I think it's 55000. Yeah, it is. All right, so I'm going to go back and change that yellow to the 55000. 55000. Okay. And now that's that color. And I'm only going to pick the ones that are in this color scheme. So I have this color and the green. Those two are in the color scheme. Now I need one more color that I have to change, all right? So I am going to work on this, whatever this blue color is right here, and I'm gonna make it one of the colors from Palatin. And I did the green, so I'm gonna pick this dark blue here, and it is 003333. So I'm gonna go back over here, and I'm gonna change that color. And I'm going to go in here, and I'm gonna call it 00. Three, 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 three. Here's my color, right? Now my split complement. Oh, I forgot to change the red one again, you guys. Having problems with that. Let's make this one right here the red one. And it was five five zero zero zero. Five five zero zero zero. Okay, now in this one I have the right color scheme. I've got the blue the green, and the red. Now watch what happens when I choose this one. And I go up here to the color schemes, and I go here. It has the colors that I can use already in it, right? I'm pointing at my screen here and I'm seeing this. I also want a black, so I'm going to change this one to black. I'm gonna change this one to the 
green. Oh, I already had the green there. Let's make that one the red. And then I'm gonna change this one to the blue. Oh, it was already blue. Maybe I'll add a gray, okay? And then my yellow one, I wanna go to the green. And now, you see how I'm building this color scheme? I used black and the gray. I am not gonna use this color, you guys. That is out of the color scheme. So, and I'm not gonna use that yellow anymore. So let me just go in here and change all the yellows to one of these right here. I'm gonna make it the, the green, all right? I'm gonna change that yellow to a green. I'm gonna change that yellow to a red in this one. I wanna get rid of the yellows. I wanna get rid of those light blues. So now here, I'm gonna pick that light blue and I gotta change it. I'm not gonna use that light blue anymore, so I might pick the, the dark blue here. And I've gotta change that visor, which was dark blue, to my light gray. There we go. Light gray and, now I have two light grays, make the other one dark blue. So see, see how I'm using that color scheme? This one right here, we're gonna change that to the red. Actually, I wanted to change this one to the red. There we go. And then back here, I gotta get rid of that ugly blue. And so I'm gonna make it the red. And you see where I'm going with this? So here's my design. I made a pattern of shapes, and then I used a color scheme. I now do not like that brown in the back. So what if I just use white in the back? Let's see what happens if I use white. So I'm gonna change my background, and let's see what my background looks like with white. No, let's see what my background looks like with black. Better. Okay. It works because this person is in front of the white. If I made that one, it wouldn't work, right? So there is right there, I've just done this color scheme with this design that I made and I have done the split complement. So I'm going to duplicate it. And now on this one, let's see, I think that I can change them and they won't change up here. Let's see. Yes, so they won't change up here. Then I'm gonna go back for this tile and I'm gonna go back into my worksheets and I'm gonna do the next color scheme. So it might be a, a triad. It might be, this one was a split complement, the first one that I did. Maybe it'll be a tet, tet the four-sided, right? But just use the same design four times in a row, five times in a row, and you're gonna change the color scheme and you're gonna use Palatin Oh my goodness, super great. Here's, here's the tetra, the force. This right here is the split complement. Do you see that? But if I wanna make it the four, then I make them equally spaced apart. There's one of these that will let us move it. I think it's, it must be this one. There we go. Now they're four apart and I can rotate them. See that, four apart. If I want brighter colors, I can bring them down here. If I want lighter colors, I can bring it up here. And then you're just gonna wave your magic wand over that, click on it, wait for a minute, and it's gonna give you the color that you want. Is that the best? Here's a triad, equally distant. So you have to make that an equally distant triad before you do it. You can rotate that around. The coolest thing ever. All right, it even says triad there. But if it's a split, oh, and here's analogous, right? So, and they can be closer together. Right. They can't be too far apart, it becomes more like a triad. So I would say at least halfway across. And then you can rotate that around and get your color schemes. Come on, the coolest thing ever. You guys are gonna do it in RGB, but it works, All right? So graphic design, that's what you're gonna be working on. Now I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint, okay? Okay make this big. 
Now we're in part two, everybody. Part two. Okay, here we go. So part two, I'm moving my face around a lot, has to do with electronic values, right? And they're different than painted values. In part two, we have RGB, red, blue, green, RGB, RGB, RGB. And if you've ever looked super close at a TV screen, I used to do that as a little kid, or even at your cell phone screen. If you look super close, you can actually see that white is not white. It's a group of colors together that makes white, okay? So computer monitors, cell phones, iPads, TV screens, all use three colors to, to create all the colors. Red, green, and blue, it's RGB. Okay, here we go. It's very different, you guys, than the color wheel. So, um, I don't know what this is. This was, must have been some sort of fun activity, but we're not doing that. Electronic color, here we go. Setting RGB values. A color is defined by three values, all right? And these three values must be within the range of zero to two, 255. This would be the kind of question that would be on a test. Blue is created when by blue value of 255 and the other two values of zero. So it would be 255, zero, zero. Equal values of red, green, and blue create yellow. This is red and green create yellow. This is where it doesn't make sense if you're looking at a color wheel, all right? But we're gonna look at some pictures of it. And then when all the values are zero, kind of good test question, it creates black. When all the values are 255, it creates white. Same sort of thing that I just said, right? Um, okay, create obs, we're not gonna do this, all right? Um, but um, the RGB colors have to do with how those colors interact with how much red, how much blue, and how much white. The way that we can see this is in Photoshop and probably on the website that we used called Photopia. And I'm going to look real quick on Photopia to see if we can see it there, right? Let's look together. I actually had an uh, I haven't, uh, I haven't looked at that yet in show, but let's see if Photopia takes us there. Ready? And it would be the same in Photoshop. So I'm gonna go to Photopia right over here. And I'm gonna type in Photopia. Or Photopia, right? And we're gonna look for the actual one that's called Photopia. There it is. And we're gonna start a project. This is just so that you can see the color scheme, y'all. New. And I'm just gonna pick something, all right? I'm gonna duplicate my background because I always do, right? And then I'm gonna go in here to change the color. This is where I had trouble the other day. But look, there it is, R, G, B. If they're all zero, do you remember what color it makes? It makes black. See down here, it makes black. If they're all three, two, 55, do you remember what color it makes? It makes black white it's different guys it just is so different um and let me see if the notes talk about okay here we go here is here is but oh, that's cmyk never mind that's the next thing okay all I'm saying is RGB color is very different, right? And then the hex color is, is what the printed color is going to be, right? But the RGB is the color that's projected. So it'd be good to probably remember this one. It might also be good to remember this one. Okay. All right. There we go. 
That's all I'm teaching about that. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. One last time, everybody. We're not doing the killer wheel, right? I'm gonna go to part three. So printed color is called, hey everybody, go back to part three. Printed color, it's called CMYK, right? It's so strange. And this one is gonna crack you up right here, CMYK. So if you have a color printer at home and you print something, you're printing in CMYK colors. You're not printing in RGB colors and you're not printing color wheel colors. You're printing CMYK colors, okay? So here we go. It's different. There's four colors that they mix to make everything and anything you print at home. There is CN, which is looks like a kind of a light blue magenta which looks like magenta in the crayon color yellow and black black the k in black is the k in cmyk so cyan magenta yellow and black i guess they didn't want to use blue because some people would think that's blue and whatever so it's black cmyk right here we go these are strange and this is true this is how the color printer works. If you mix magenta and cyan, you'll get blue. It doesn't work on a color wheel, you guys, it's different. If you mix magenta and yellow, you'll get red. And if you get mix yellow and cyan, you'll get green. So see how it's very different? So when we design, especially in graphic design, when we design, we have to, in Photoshop, we have to determine if we're doing CMYK color or or, or RGB color. And we have to design like that because you could look at it on your screen and it looks one way, but when it prints, it prints another way unless you design a CMYK, right? That's kind of the main deal there. And some programs can switch the color mode from RGB to CMYK and Photoshop can do that, but it's, it's no fun to do it. it it's, it's a, yeah, it's no fun to do that. All right. So CMYK colors go from one to 100, right? So you have to remember that, that's kind of a testy thing too. And RGB colors go from zero to 255. So a color is defined by the four values. They must be within the range of one to 100. You can, whoops, you can achieve this color. You can achieve the same color as RGB, but it's gonna have different values. For instance, the color blue in RGB is 00255, but CMYK it's 99 for C, 67 for M, zero for Y, and 20 for black. Totally different way of looking at color, but you are looking at a color because it's pigment color. See this pigment at the top? Printed pigment color. That's why if you get those little cartridges to put in your um, printer, they're expensive because it's not paint, it's pigment color and it's a richer color and it lasts longer than like a like paint would, right? Although it doesn't feel like it when you're buying those cartridges. All right, we are not gonna do this assignment either. So we're done, but you definitely need all those words for your test that will be next week, okay? So let's look at that. All right, you guys, I'm excited. I love you. I miss you already. Go out and change your world for the better. Have a great one. Bye-bye.